one day, Jacob had left Laban. He's moving on, and he's about to meet his, father, uh, uh, his, his brother Esau. And the last meeting that they had, he had tricked the, him out of the father's the blessing of the firstborn. And his brother was entertaining thoughts of killing him. He said, I'm going to kill that man. So that's the last memory about 17 years prior that he had of his brother. Now they're about to face each other after all that time. And he heard that Esau is coming after him with a large army. He is scared for his life. And the night before they're about to meet, an angel comes and visited, visited him. And they wrestled all night. Okay? And then at the end of the wrestling match, and the man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with man and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? And he blessed him there. He's asking for our blessing, right? And God is about to bless him. But he said, before I bless you, I have a question to ask of you. What is your name? My name is Jacob. No, you shall no longer be called Jacob. You will be called Israel. From now on, your name is not Jacob. Your name is Israel. For you struggle with men and with God and have overcome. The thing that blessed me is the meaning of the names. The name Jacob means trickster. Okay? But the name Israel means prince or one who rules with God. Your name and your conscience are heavily tied together. All right? When God is changing name, he's changing conscience. He's changing what he sees in himself when he sees himself. He says, I don't want you to see trickster anymore. I now want you to see one who reigns with God. All right? Because if we can see one who reigns with God, the blessing is already finished. He asked for blessing, and God said, let me change your conscience first. Your blessing is in your healed conscience. Mm. Hallelujah. I'm going to say that again because it was good. Your blessing, it's in your healed, good, healed, perceived conscience. If you can see within yourself one who rules and reigns with God, blessing is not even an issue. It is finished. And you rule and reign with God. He has, those are my like you. you are the ones who rule and reign with God. You are the one who rules and reigns with God. Now, this is the funny thing. I noticed that after, after Jacob moved on from there, if you read the scripture, every time it talks about Jacob, it does not say Israel. It still says Jacob. Jacob went out and did this. Jacob went out. And, but God had already changed his name. But he's still Jacob. So in Genesis 35... God interrupts the program again. After Jacob returned from Padan Aram, God appeared to him again and blessed him and said to him, blessing and conscience, and said to him, your name is Jacob, but you will no longer be called Jacob. Your name will be Israel. So he named him Israel. Wait a minute. Didn't he just do that in chapter 32? It says, after this, the Lord, and he appeared to him again. Why is God appearing to him again? Because Jacob heard it, but he didn't get it. Why am I preaching conscience to you again? Because maybe you heard it, but just because you heard it doesn't mean you get it. And it's very important that you get it. Because your conscience is the key to your blessing. Your conscience is the key to your royalty. Your conscience is the key to you ruling and reigning with God. Israel means one who rules and reigns with God. Hallelujah. So he says, I like what I've told you, but I don't like what you've heard. So I'm telling you for a second time, you are no longer Jacob. You are now Israel. You are of the God class. You rule and reign with God. Hallelujah. Sometimes Israel shows up and sometimes Jacob shows up. And what I found is that his, the nature that manifests in his life was dependent on what mood he was in. You know? And it's funny how the things that we find ourselves, the situations of life, deal so heavily with how we see ourselves. When we make a mistake, it's not the mistake that's the problem. It's how I see myself. 
We kick ourselves and say, man, I should not have. Who are we talking to? Ourselves. Remember the story when, when Jacob, when they brought to Jacob his son Joseph's coat and it was full of blood. Remember that? And J the Bible says specifically, Jacob saw that. Not Israel. Jacob saw that and he grieved. He tore his clothes. He says, we, we, uh, in, 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 uh, in sorrow, I will go down to my grave. Jacob is saying that. Israel is not saying that. <laughs> well, do they, is that two persons, bipolar personality? No, 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 no. It's just the God nature that he sees in the mirror or the Jacob nature that he sees in the mirror. Are you following what I'm saying? And, and the problems of life caused him to see himself differently. But when he was doing good, he also said, we cannot allow who we are to be dependent on the uncertainty of life. Yes. But in, in Genesis chapter 46, I thought this was interesting. God appears to him another time. And this time it says in chapter 46 and verse 2, it says, And God spoke to Israel in a vision at night and said, Jacob, Jacob, here I am, he replied. Now this is what I found was interesting. Like this is a lot of dancing around this name. It says, you know, God appeared to Israel at night and the Lord God called to him and said, Jacob, Jacob. He did not say, Israel, Israel. Notice the language. And God spoke to Israel in a vision at night and said, Jacob, Jacob. This was a bit confusing to me because who was the one that named him Israel? Yeah. He's, and he said specifically, if I remember, your name shall no longer be Jacob. You are now Israel. And who was it that named him a second time just to make sure that he got it right? But I asked him seriously, you know, what's going on here? And he, I, I, he showed me something and made the Lord reveal it to you like he did to me beyond what I'm saying. But God showed me that because Jacob could never graduate to the Israel level, because his maximum, maximum was the Jacob level, because he couldn't bump out of that, God could only meet him at the place of his faith. Faith is not for things. Faith is for you yourself. Right? Faith is for your conscience. Jacob could never leave Jacob, so God had to come down and relate to him as much as he did not want to. I am Israel. Come rain, shine. Good day, bad day. Eh? Hard times, good times. Whatever throw you throw at me, I am Israel. Bring on Goliath. Bring on the bear. Bring on the giant. Bring on the armies of, of the enemy. Bring on any onslaught because I am Israel. I say Israel and you will agree with whatever I say because I, I don't rule and reign by myself. He doesn't rule and reign by himself. He rules and reigns with me. That's Israel. I am Israel. We are in partnership together here. You breathe. You say ah. I say chew. You have no issues with people. Consider, consider with, with in the case of David. David means what? Beloved. What came on David? The anointed. David was the beloved and he was the anointed. His boss was trying to kill him. I know some of you have a difficult boss. But your boss is not sending armies after you. Okay? He was trying to kill him. And he had chance two times to take matters into his own hands. All right? He says, now, in fact, all of his army came to him and says, David, today the Lord has laid your enemy into your hand. He has set you up. Go ahead and give him one and take the throne. Let's say they're all waiting. But David says, mm -hmm. no, no, David, you don't understand. This will go down as self-defense. Okay? You, this, you will not be indicted for any of this. This works. He's trying to kill you. You kill him. Self-defense. Go take your throne. All right? David said, I will not touch God's anointing. How could I touch it? And I used to always think, that's some amazing willpower, David. That's some amazing, how do you like get the strength and the courage? Hmm, I will not. No, it wasn't like that. See, if you understand who you really are, you have nothing to prove. You have no fight to win. You are already everything that you will ever be. Are you following what I'm saying? It was finished in David's mirror. Beloved anointed, what more do you need? Everything responds to you. Yes. You don't respond to anything. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, Jesus. Jesus had a chance when he was standing before Pilate. 
In fact, Pilate was so amazed because Jesus' life was in Pilate's hand and Pilate was trying to set him up. He says, don't you know who I am? <laughs> Pilate says, I have the power to free you or release you. And Jesus said to him, you would have no power over me unless it were not given to you from on high. In other words, you are not the one in charge here. I am the one in charge here because I am the beloved and I am the anointed. Are you following what I'm saying? So you don't take my life. I lay down my life because I am the one who's in charge. I don't respond to things. You resp things respond to me. Every, because why? Because when I see myself, you, you follow what I'm saying? I am the beloved. You have no issues with people. You don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to look out for the crooked people who are trying to come in behind the back. You just understand who you are. You just hold the mirror in your face and watch God fight your battles. Watch God level mountains. Praise the name of the... Are you following what I'm saying? There is victory in who you are, in who God has made you to be. He, praise the... You know, there's so much fighting in the church among brothers and sisters. So much tension in the... Don't talk with that group. Don't talk with that denomination. It's all a picture that we have not seen in the mirror yet. Because if you really know who you are, you see, it shows... If you are royalty, you have no issue with anybody or anything because everything is yours. Prince George was born a few weeks ago. Prince George in England. I was thinking about this. You know, because this man was born the son of a prince, the grandson of the queen, he's direct line to the throne. He is born royalty. He was born a millionaire. He was born with all of the land and property. Every need of his is met from diaper to throne till he gets there. You see? He doesn't have to worry about his protection, that's provided. His food, that's provided. His clothes, that's provided. He is on assignment to get to a throne, and the, the, the whole nation grooms his way. Every British citizen pays tax to make sure that baby George is on his way. And it's funny, you know, if you just stop and think about it, he's just a person just like me. I am giving money to a baby. But the whole British media is like, oh my goodness, they're camping outside. Did you see that on TV? <laughs> camping outside. When is it? What's the big deal? How many babies? But this baby, he's, I'm going to pay taxes for the rest. <laughs> we, we love, we love the British and England. Lucy, excuse me. <laughs> no, but, but see, something has been programmed. This, this baby, he, he's not a normal baby. He is born the son of a prince, the grandson of the queen. He's going to rule one day. He has a, a glorious destiny. Let's pave the way. And see, when Christ sent his son for you and me, he paved the way. What you need, if you understand who you really are, your needs are met by his riches and glory. If you understand, really, you don't have to fight for yourself. It is provided in your conscience. You are Israel. You rule and reign with God. That means if you rule and reign with God, you are royalty, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people possess, precious to God. Hallelujah. He has valued you, on, valued you on that level. My God. So there's no fight for George. Imagine George coming down to the prosperity level. That's my toy. That's my, if you give your toy, there's a mountain. Are you following? You have the world, George. All of England is at your disposal. George, George, wake up. George, I'm changing this message in Jesus' name to George. Wake up. Know who you are. Some of you have been living just like God had to come again and again and again to Israel to wake him up, to show him who he really is. To show that if you are Israel, everything is at your disposal. Everything that the Father has is also yours. Everything that the Father has is also yours. You are royalty. Royal blood has been spilled on your behalf.